Hello, welcome back for lesson 7.2. We are only covering part of lesson 7.2 if you have the book. So we are only covering finding sample size for estimating a single population mean. <clears throat> and to discuss that, we've been having discussions in class on is our sample size big enough? How, how big does it need to be? And that's what we're gonna look at here. So we need to refresh on the sample mean is X bar. It's the point estimate for the population mean. <clears throat> and the sample standard deviation S is the point estimate for the population standard deviation. So finding the sample size, um, we're gonna need three things. We'll need to know what confidence we would like to have. And that confidence will help us to determine our critical Z value here. And then we need to know the uh, standard deviation and then the error that we want to be within, the margin of error. And always, 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 we always round up to the nearest integer for sample size. So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples. <clears throat> the population standard deviation for the age of Foothill College students is 15 years. If we want to be 95% confident that the sample mean age is within two years of the true population mean age of Foothill College students, how many randomly selected Foothill College students must be surveyed? So it says we want to be 95% confident. And so that means um, we need alpha, which is one minus our confidence level, which is one minus 0.95 or 0 0.05. And then we want to find the Z of alpha divided by two. So back over here, alpha divided by two is 0 0.025. So we need the Z of 0 0.025. In the modules, there is a formula packet that you can print out if you'd like. Um, in the back of the book, and also on Alex in the back of the book, there is um, a table that you can use. We're going to introduce this T distribution in the next lesson, but at the very bottom of this page here, is the Z values. So what's nice is we can look up 0.025 is our alpha. Those go along the top. So 0.025, and we can go all the way to the bottom and see that that is 1.96. I'm going to remind you how we know how to do this in, in um, Desmos as well. So let's fill in the formula on our paper, and then we're going to use Desmos. So 1.96 um, and that's going to get multiplied by the 15 years as the standard deviation. And then that numerator will get squared. And then all over the error, which we said we want it to be within two years. And we need to square that as well. So let me take you to my decimal screen here. And you can see that we figured out our alpha, we took alpha divided by two, and then I'm using the inverse CDF of the normal distribution of that 0.025, and I could do one minus 0.025, they're symmetric. So it, you don't, you can ignore the negative, it's just the 1.96 is what we're gonna round that to. So in my formula, I have 1.96 times 15, that quantity squared, divided by the standard deviation, or the, I'm sorry, divided by the error squared, the margin of error, two, so two squared. So this comes out to be 216.09. So this is equal to 216.09, and we always round up, so n is going to be 217. Population standard deviation for the height of high school basketball players is three inches. If we want to be 95% confident that the sample mean height is within one inch of the true population height, how many randomly selected students must be surveyed? So we have the same confidence we had up here. So we already know our Z of alpha divided by two is Z of 0 0.025 is equal to 1.96. And so we know that N equals 1.96 times the standard deviation of three, that quantity squared all over the error, because it says within one inch, so one squared. 
And you'll see in Desmos that I did this one as well in Desmos. And that came out to be 34.57. And so that means we always round up. So it's going to be n equals 35 players need to be surveyed. That should be enough to get you started on uh, some sample size.